Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Pushkar Kumar from Dr. D.Y. Patel Medical College Hospital and Research Center, presenting my paper on topic vascular complications in pancreatitis, a retrospective analysis under Dr. Varsha Rangankar Ma'am. So starting with the introduction, overall incidence of pancreatitis has been increasing gradually, regionally as well as globally. The severe form of acute pancreatitis, that is a necrotizing pancreatitis, occurs in about 20 to 30 percent of all patients with this disease, resulting in protracted clinical course, high incidence of local complication and high mortality rate. The risk factors for major vascular complications include necrotizing pancreatitis, multi-organ failure, sepsis, and pancreatic fluid collections such as abscess, pseudocyst, or walled of necrosis. Previous pancreatic necrostomy, long-term anticoagulation therapy, and underlying vasculitis also elevate the probability of developing this complication. Severe pancreatic inflammation and necrosis results in local spread of exocrine, proteolytic, and lipolytic enzymes. These enzymes cause weakening and elastolytic erosions of the vessel wall, which may result in formation of pseudoenerism if, uh, if there is a continued bleeding into a contained space or organ, or contained hematoma if the pseudoenerism becomes thrombosed or active extravasation stops, or frank intraperitoneal hemorrhage if the pseudoenerism ruptures. Various pro proposed mechanisms for splenic vein thrombosis include pancreatic inflammation in vicinity of the splenic vein, causing direct vascular endothelial damage, compression or pressure from the edematous pancreas or pseudosis cause venous stasis and hence thrombosis. Objectives are to evaluate the vascular complication associated with acute and chronic pancreatitis and to characterize the type of vascular involvement in pancreatitis. Materials and method. The place of my study was Dr. D.Y. Patel Medical College. My sample size was 147 and my period of data analysis was 5 months. And the method of diagnosis was 128 slice MDCT of Philips. A triple phase MDCT protocol was applied providing first a basal scan followed by arterial, portal, venous and excretory phases. Thin contiguous CT images were taken in axial plane, coronal, sagittal, 3D reformated images, VRT and MIP reconstruction was obtained post-processing. A retrospective analysis of the patient presenting with pancreatitis at our hospital was done by identifying such patients in our database. Careful evaluation of the scans and reports was done, followed by detection of vascular complications among the shortlisted 120, 40, 147 cases. Now the results based on demographics are in over 147 pages. Patients, 128 were male and 19 were female. Out of the male, the maximum were of the age group 20 to 40, which accounted for 64 of the 147. Among the female, the maximum were from 40 to 60 years age group, which accounts for 12 out of 147. This is the histogram depicting the same results. Now the results based on vascular events are distribution of the venous thrombosis were seen in out of 40 patients out of 147, which accounts for 27%. The isolated splenic vein involvement was seen in 13. The isolated portal vein involvement was seen in 7. Isolated superior mesenteric vein involvement was seen in 3. Combining portal vein plus splenic vein thrombosis seen was seen in 5. Portal vein plus superior mesenteric vein involvement was seen in 3. And superior splenic vein plus superior mesenteric vein involvement was seen in 2. And all three veins were involved in 7 out of 40. Based on the arterial involvement, the total arterial involvement was seen in 12 out of 147 cases. Splenic artery was involved in 4 out of 12. Gastrodudinal artery on 3. Splen superior mesenteric artery was uh, in involved in 1. And other like inferior mesenteric artery and aorta were involved in 4 out of 12. Types of arterial involvement like total uh, pseudoneurysms were 4 in which 2 was splenic artery pseudonyms and 2 were gastrodudinal artery pseudonyms. Thrombosis in the arteries were seen in 7 and pseudonyms with hematoma was seen in 1 patient. Now the results based on associated findings like cavernoma were seen in 5 out of 147, chronic thrombosis were seen in 2, collaterals in 28, varices in 5, splenomegaly was seen in 30, hepatomegaly in 21, chronic liver disease in 4, and ascites were seen in 44 patients. These are the pie chart demonstration of the above findings. These are the CT contrast, axial, and coronal images showing hypodense filling defect in the main portal vein and its right main branch, suggesting portal vein thrombosis. Now, in these uh, CT contrast axial images, you can see a filling defect in the splenic vein and multiple uh, collateral channels at the porta hepatis uh, showing a splenic vein thrombosis with cavernoma formation. In this image, you can see there is a filling defect at the portal vein confluence 
extending into the splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein. In these CT axial and coronal sections, you can see aneurysmal dilatation of the gastroduodenal artery with hyperdense content uh, within which is the hematoma. So this is a GDA aneurysm with hematoma formation in a case of pancreatitis. In these uh, CT coronal sections and uh, MIP sections, you can see there is a dilatation and pseudo aneurysm of the splenic artery. So moving forward to the discussion, vascular complications are serious consequence of pancreatitis that require a careful patient evaluation, diagnostic workup for assessment of the risk, deciding the management of the patient, type of treatment and its benefit. In our study, 147 patients of pancreatitis were taken, 52 that is the 34% patients had vascular complication of which 40 were venous and 12 were arterial. In the study conducted by Vajusinovic et al., similar incidence of 53.3% was also reported. Starting discussion again, repeat. Vascular complications are serious consequence of pancreatitis that require a careful patient evaluation, diagnostic workup for assessment of the risk. Deciding the management of patient, type of treatment and its benefit. Uh, sorry, once again, uh, repeat. Discussion. Once again, repeat. Now, moving forward to the discussion, vascular complications are serious consequence of pancreatitis that require a careful patient evaluation, diagnostic workup for assessment of the risk, deciding the management of patients, type of treatment and its benefit. In our study, 147 patients of pancreatitis, 52 had vascular complications, out of which 40 were venous and 12 were arterial. In study conducted by Vujasnovic et al. Similar incidence of 53.3% was also reported. The incidence of isolated splenic vein thrombosis was the highest, followed by portal and then the superior mesenteric vein and then the combination of all three. Narayan et al. also find splenic vein thrombosis as the most common venous complication seen in 65% of the cases. Pseudonerism occurred in 0.2% of the patient which involved splenic artery and gastroduodenal artery. Butler et al. In its systematic review and meta-analysis on the efficacy of the endovascular embolization of the pseudoaneurysm in chronic pancreatitis showed a pooled incidence rate of pseudoaneurysm to be 0.03% with the most common site being the splenic artery. The incidence of vascular complication was predominantly in the male population between the age group of 20 to 40. We detected portosystemic collaterals in 70% of the patient and varices in 12.5% of the patient with venous complication. Butler et al. in their systematic review and meta-analysis reported collaterals in 59% of the patient, which was similar to our study. However, there was higher incidence of the varices reported in 53% of the patients, 77.3% of the patient which were gastric. In our study, all patients were found to have varices in the gastric fundus. None of our patients with splenic vein thrombosis and varices had gastrointestinal bleeding. That is a contrast with the systematic review and meta-analysis by the Butler et al. showing the aggregated rate of associated gastrointestinal bleeding being 12.3%. This was cross-sectional retrospective study with one-time collection of the patient imaging finding. We did not have adequate follow-up of the patient who may have developed the GI bleeding subsequently. Anand et al. also showed a low occurrence of gastrointestinal bleeding, suggesting the presence of collateral as a reducing factor for the bleeding. That is in line with our results since 70% of the patient developed abdominal collateral vessels, which could explain the absence of varicel bleeding in most of the patients. So concluding, the recent literature has shown the rising trend of vascular complications with pancreatitis. Venous complications, especially the isolated splenic vein thrombosis, is one of the most frequent vascular complications in patient of pancreatitis. Multi-phase CT play a crucial role in accurate and timely diagnosis of these complications, assessment of type of complication, which is extremely important in management of the patients. Now, these are my references. Thank you.